Due to the increasingly alarming incidents of crime and violence in St. Lucia and the rest of the Caribbean, the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, recently partnered with the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs in hosting its annual health research conference in St. Lucia under the theme Violence in the Caribbean, a Public Health Crisis. Executive Director of CARFA, Dr. Joy St. John, says that despite the idyllic image of the Caribbean as a destination of peace and relaxation, we must begin to address the harsh reality that affects our people on a daily basis. As the Caribbean moves forward, we must leverage best practices from around the world through adapting them to the unique context of the CARICOM region. Violence is a complex issue which has been complicated by our dependence on tourism, our geographic location, and porous borders, to name a few. In the past, violence was not always recognized as a public health concern. This conference aims to bridge that gap and create a space for open dialogue about the health social and economic impacts of violence. According to St. Lucia's Minister for Health, the Honorable Moses Shabatis, this shift from viewing violence in a public health lens is a significant step forward, which not only addresses the root causes of violence, but has plans to develop preventative measures that will create safer communities for everyone. The first step he highlights was the recent appointment of a Minister for Crime Prevention, the Honorable Jeremiah Norbert. Last night alone convinced me that the dialogue on violence in the Caribbean must reach not only delegates at conferences, but every street corner and every community in the Caribbean. Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, Dr. Terence Michel Drew, was also in attendance, presenting on the topic of firearm violence in the region. The Caribbean Firearms Study documented that the average medical expenditure required to treat a single firearm injury was equivalent to between 2 and 11 times the annual per capita public health spending in three case countries, Bahamas, Barbados, and Jamaica, and I'm very sure it is no different for St. Kitts and Nevis or St. Lucia for that matter. What has also become quite alarming is a trend of increasing pediatric firearm injuries, gunshot injuries among young children and adolescents. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Philippe J. Pierre, commended Carthel and the various stakeholders for hosting the annual Thank health you. conference on Ireland. He would later explain four key points that came to mind when he thinks about the issue of crime and violence. Dealing with crime and violence in the Caribbean is far more complex and challenging than many decision makers and the people of the Caribbean might appreciate. Secondly, I was able to better appreciate how targeted and sustained research on key current and emerging issues can help to abate crime and violence in our region. Thirdly, I felt reassured that we have the intellectual capacity in the region to address what is arguably the biggest threat in the sustainable development of the Caribbean. My fourth thought is captured in this question that I pose to myself and now to you. How can we organize the abundant intellectual talent in our region to support evidence-based decision-making on crime and violence? Representatives from the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs were committed to continue working together with various agencies, both regional and international, to help reduce the spread of the crime and violence in St. Lucia and the Caribbean. Reporting for the Ministry of Health in St. Lucia, I am Jake Brown.